Give us a sense of where the virus is right now in Michigan. How bad is it? Are you still on the rise in terms of number of cases? And I'm sorry to say deaths. Well, thanks to the uh, important actions that Governor Gretchen Whitmer and I have taken and that people have, have worked to stay home and stay safe, we haven't been able to, we believe, uh, see our curve plateau as far as how the virus is spreading in communities across the state and even the hardest hit parts of our state, like the city of Detroit and its surrounding metropolitan area. So we believe that we're trending in the right direction, and we certainly are going to continue to be mindful and make policy decisions to continue to maximize public safety and maximize um, the reduced reduction of this virus in our communities. I'm glad you raised the issue of Detroit and the surrounding counties like Oakland and things like that. Is De Michigan right now, in terms of coronavirus, a tale of two states? That is to say, is it very different in the rest of the state than it is in Detroit and the immediately surrounding counties? Well, it's very difficult to say that definitively because we are still uh, working very hard to ramp up our testing capacity across the state. But yes, it has been shown that southeastern Michigan, where Detroit, Oakland, and Macomb counties are, have seen the highest number of confirmed cases and the highest deaths. And this has even visited me personally. I've lost 16 people in my life to COVID-19. So this is real for people, but we all know that we need to work together. This is everybody versus COVID-19 here in the state of Michigan. And so um, by keeping one another safe, by staying home, by practicing social distancing, we've issued uh, orders to make sure that people are doing that in Michigan. And we believe that that is bearing fruit. And I'm sorry for the loss of people in your life. We shouldn't just run over that. That's a, that's a big issue. Uh, give us a sense of the extent to which you believe this may be because uh, Detroit has a very large African-American population. I think 75% of your population, something like that. And there are indications that African-Americans are being hit harder by this disease than others. Well, the state of Michigan was one of the first and remains one of the few states in the country to report out its coronavirus test results and deaths along racial and ethnic lines. And we chose to do that because we know that there have been health disparities in our communities for generations that have led to poor health outcomes. And so once we noticed and observed this trend here with the coronavirus, we decided to step up and take action. And Michigan became a leader by establishing our Michigan Coronavirus Task Force on Racial Disparities, of which I am the chair. We want to address several things. The fact that there are environmental factors that contribute to increased rate of infection whether it's things like low air quality, but also the fact that so many people who are working on the front lines, our nurses and nurse assistants, our bus drivers, people at the grocery store, people who are working for utility companies, our first responders, they're more likely to be low-income black people and people of color, and they are more exposed to this virus because of the nature of their jobs, and they're still working. So we're working to put interventions on the ground right now to help decrease their risk of infection, increase their ability to isolate, and so that we can stop the spread of the virus in the community. And that, we believe, will help to decrease the mortality rate amongst black people. Black people make up 14 percent of the population in the state of Michigan as a whole, but we have made up 40 percent of the deaths in the state of Michigan. So it's important that we act and act now. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, uh, this is first and foremost obviously about the health and the safety of citizens. There's also some economics involved. The city of Detroit is just coming out of a bankruptcy, just getting back on its feet. What kind of financial pressure is this putting on Detroit? It's putting tremendous financial pressure on all of our cities and all of our states. The human services costs alone are going to be a big hit on budgets across the nation, and that is why we continue to advocate fiercely for more resources for state and local governments from the federal government because we have to balance our budgets and they don't. And we need to make sure that money is not uh, being put in front of people's survival right now. And so we're working hard to unlock the resources that we can at the state level to support individuals and families and small businesses, importantly. But we're going to need a lot more help from the feds to make that happen. Um, but I know this. Detroit's a resilient city. I came back here uh, home in 2014. And, and I've seen just the amazing beauty, not just the potential, but the reality of how much hard work and creativity exists in this city. We can get through this by working together. The state of Michigan will get through this by working together. Yeah, for those of us who've known Detroit over the years, it's come back a long way. It's, it's quite dramatic. At the same time, the report, and there's a report on Bloomberg actually just today, that you're going to be short something like $358 million that you have to come up with in the next 16 months, or the state will take over the city. What are the prospects of that? Well, again, the financial hit for the, that's coming from this pandemic is something that is, for real, is unprecedented. And so we are working um, to plan for all these scenarios. But what's important to note is that, again, 
uh, relief from this will need to come from the federal government to make sure the state and local governments have what they need. Um, we have a big hole in our state budget because of this. We're going to have a big hole in city budgets across the state in, in communities large and small. So um, we haven't, we, we don't have uh, the answer on any of these questions yet because we frankly don't know how large the hole is going to be. Uh, but we're working hard to prepare for these worst case scenarios. And right now, the best way to do that is to advocate for the federal government through our congressional delegation and to the Trump administration directly to make sure that we get the resources that we need so our communities can get through this. Uh, we're starting to see some states begin to experiment with opening the economy back up. Certainly Georgia has said they're going to open some things up as soon as this Friday. We even had in New York our Governor Cuomo say that maybe elective surgery is possible in the upstate part, away from New York City. Is that possible? Are you starting to look at that for Michigan, given the fact that there may be a different situation in the southeast of the state as opposed to the rest of the state? Goodness knows Upper Peninsula is a different world. Well, first and foremost, people are going to drive our decisions, people's public health and public safety, because our economy can't come back without people being confident that they will be safe when they leave their homes. And in order to establish that, we really need three things in place. One is massively ramped up testing in every part of the state. We cannot understand community spread until we can test enough people, including people without symptoms. We've done a lot of work to make more testing available in the state of Michigan, but we need more from the federal government as well as we're trying to procure it from private sector sources across the country and across the world. The second thing we need is the ability to make sure that we can do contact tracing so that once people have tested positive, that we're able to find out who they may have potentially exposed so those people can get tested. And then the third piece is enabling people to isolate so that we can safely contain the spread of the virus. We need to make sure those three things are in place across the state before any region can think about coming back. And we're working on plans to establish that in Michigan right now. So we're going to be releasing some more details on that in the coming days. But those are the principles that we're going to need to follow so we can open up responsibly um, and not uh, cause a second wave. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, we just talked with Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, and she's confident that this $484 billion spending package will pass, which includes $25 billion for testing. Have you had a chance to look at that? Will that go a long way toward dealing with some of your need for testing? I mean, every, every resource that's going to contribute to getting more tests in the state of Michigan and across the country is helpful to us to understand and respond to this virus, so I appreciate that. I know that we're going to continue to need more resources from the federal government for testing, for testing components, as well as for uh, things like the Paycheck Protection Program, which I helped to launch here in the state of Michigan to support our small businesses. That ran out of money. Michigan business got about $10 billion, but that's nowhere near covering all the small businesses in our state that need the support. So we're going to continue to work with our congressional delegation to advocate for more in future coronavirus relief packages, but we appreciate any dollars coming into the state of Michigan.